service here put on by the Veterans of Foreign Wars and American Legion. And we have today some very distinguished guests as speakers. And we have a new volunteer as our pastor, our, our chaplain. Uh, we don't have one right now that is available. But this gentleman here, he's been around here a long time. He's a church-going man, and he certainly believes in God, and he believes in his country. So we'll have him as our uh, chaplain today. And so if everybody will gather their seats, well, we'll get started. Can you hear that all right out there? The wind's blowing pretty good, but you're a good-looking crowd, and I'd like for you to, most of you, look, look out there and see that there big red plaque there. That's from the Ladies Auxiliary of the Veterans of Poland Wars. They spent two or three weeks knitting them flowers together. That's what the veteran is all about, the memorial service. It represents, that poppy represents our fallen heroes. And while I'm at it, we just got a sailor killed two days ago in Afghanistan. So it's never going to end. So let's just keep it in our hearts to remember those that's fighting over there too. And the wounded. There is so many seriously wounded. So if all of our we look like we have all of our speakers and everything. So uh, uncover, comrades, and uh, let's let our chaplain say his prayer. Bow with me as we pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day you've given us to come here to remember our veterans and to honor these who have made the supreme sacrifice giving their lives, defending their country, and the freedoms that we enjoy every day. And Lord, we remember those who were wounded fighting alongside these men. Lord, we remember those that fought alongside them and made it home. We remember those, Lord, that have served their country throughout the years. And we remember those, Lord, that are serving their country now, fighting for freedom. Lord, we just ask that we never forget the sacrifice that these men have made and women. I pray, Lord, that you would just be with us in everything that we do. Lord, give us the strength and courage that we need to make it through each day. Walk with us in our daily lives. Help us to be the people that you'd have us to be. Reassure us, Lord, when we have doubts, and forgive us for we fail you. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You bet. Thank you, John. That's outstanding. Uh, John's been around here a long time. He lives here in Durham, and he's sincere and dedicated to everything he does. So if we have some outstanding speakers here today. We have one, he, like I am, he don't like to talk much, and he is the mayor of this town, and so we would like to, that Richard can step up here, and he's been through the battle, too, several different ways. Richard, would you come up here and have something to say? I'm very honored to be part of the ceremonies this morning to honor our veterans. You know, those that come home alive, they have a lot of things they have to live through. And it seems to me our government wasn't ready to for them to come home. But we need to be in support of all of our veterans. You know, I'm thankful that you come out to honor our veterans. Those that were killed and come home, their war is over. But their families and their friends, they're still going through the war. And they will until they pass. And we do want to with all our heart, not just one day out of the year, but every day. We've done so much for our freedom. You know, we had a Savior that gave his life for our freedom. And these boys, they. Emulate our 
our Savior. They gave a lot for us to be able to do what we can do with the freedoms that we have. You know, a lot of people take this day and they go to the lake. They enjoy their pleasures. But I'm thankful that we have a lot of water. I'll always be thankful for you. Thank you. Richard, thank you very much. And, uh, Richard's been part of this community for a long time. And we appreciate you, Richard, for all the outstanding work that you see get done and gets done. And okay, I, I don't want to add something to you, comrades, that just like uh, Richard said there, these boys and girls, see, when we was in there, it was boys. The girls was back behind in the medical corps and in supplies. But today, our ladies is right beside the combat. They are combat team. So it is a very large challenge that we've got. And what hurts me the worst is that they won't allow no cameras in the airports when they fly our, I mean, seriously wounded veterans back home or when they bring our dead back. We'll not let a camera in there. That is very sick to me, it is. And I went to National Air Post for an All-American uh, post back in 02, and I met a gentleman up there. He was 91 years old, and he told a story about our fighting in service. He said it started in the uh, Korea War and it went right on to Vietnam and said it will keep going. We're a fighting family feuds in most wars. Stop and think, your Korean War was a civil war. Vietnam was a civil war. And he said the reason why we don't need to be in that shape in that country and helping them people, you're taking sides. He said, I can like prove to you the fact. He said, me and my father, we was traveling with our families, coming from Missouri to Oklahoma, and said, we seen a man, a straddle a woman, beating her. And it was unbelievable. My dad said, this has got to stop. He got off and went and pulled the man off and the woman. The woman grabbed the axe handle, and the man grabbed the axe handle and liked to kill his dad. So that's what he's saying, refer. Stay out of family quarrels. Okay, thank you. We have another outstanding speaker here. Raymond, would you come up and... Thank you, Vernon. When asked to speak, I didn't, I didn't uh, want to get up here unprepared, so I did a little research. Headquarters, Grand Army of the Republic, General Orders Number 11, Washington, D.C., May 5th, 1868. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet, churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will, in their own way, arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other, of preserving and strengthening these, those kinds of fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and Marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this re result than cherished tenderly the memory of our heroic deed who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foes? Their soldier lives were the revelry of freedom to a race in chains and their deaths the tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard our, their graves with sacred vigilance all that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going 
of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of, of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull, other hands slack, and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as light and warmth of life remain to us. Let us then at the time appointed gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of spring. Let us raise above them the dear old flag that saved their dishonor. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us as sacred charge upon a nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. It is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope that it will be kept up from year to year, while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to lend it friendly aid in bringing to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time of stimulus, simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders will use efforts to make this order effective by order of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief. In accordance with General Logan's General Orders Number 11, we gather here to preserve and strengthen those kind of fraternal feelings that have bound together the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who united together to assure our freedoms, our liberty. This is not a holiday. This is a day to dedicate to honor those who have fought and died to preserve our freedoms. This is also a day to rededicate our support to the families orphaned by war and those injured by war. We here resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that the freedom they fought for is still being defended every day of our lives. After these ceremonies, we shall leave these gardens of stone with a higher resolve and dedication to those who gave such supreme sacrifice. We shall use this higher education dedication to motivate our children that they too never forget at what cost our freedom comes. May God continue to bless the families of those lost, those who have fought, and those who continue to fight for our freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Rev. That, and our soldiers, our men and women, are still doing that. And I know our younger people will be carrying on the load in the future. So, uh, comrades, uh, we uh, have a list. Well, I have a list here that we have to report every year, and some of it even to the uh, national mistake at our own state, or a little bit later than the year. But these are veterans of foreign wars and deceased. Veterans of foreign wars meant they was in foreign service. So I will read you the names of these. Bobby Bowles from Henrietta, Oklahoma. Haggard, Vance K. from Morris, Oklahoma. Wilson E. McVeigh, Broken Arrow. George E. Tanner from Stigler, Jack C. Thomas, uh, Wichita Falls, Texas, Claude Ward, Henrietta, Oklahoma, Jimmy R. Wynn, Okmuggy, Oklahoma, Ruben Sendo, Durr, Oklahoma, Harold Cooper, Henrietta, Oklahoma, Marvin Glenn, Henrietta, Oklahoma. Kenneth Grace, Henrietta, Oklahoma. Ray Malin, Henrietta, Oklahoma. And this is a well-known man here, William Bill Miller. He's deceased. And uh, Stanley Nowitzki, if I didn't pronounce that right, don't get, <laughs> don't blame me. But anyhow, Stanley Nowitzki. 
Jimmy Pharaoh, William Bill Pup, just lately, and Timothy Williams. These are the deceased that uh, we have lost in the Veterans of Foreign Wars that seen combat. And I can tell you, some of them are looking at them. They've been all over the world. They was in Europe, South Pacific, and the North Pacific. So, anyhow, we will start our program now. Uh, Richard, would you like to have something else to say? <laughs> John, what about you? you you're a rounder. And would you? I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. You know, to remember our veterans. I know they don't get near enough recognition for the sacrifices they've made. And I know we don't think that we can do veterans are homeless on the streets. Lord, I pray that we will just continue to support these people, give them the help that they need. They're not out there but yours. Thank you, John. And here is a long time friend, Kent Pharaoh, and he always had something to say, and it was always good. And Kent promised me something in the, uh, the uh, Pentecostal church on Veterans Day in Durham that he would practice and play the taps on the bagpipes. And he said, I'll do it. But also, uh, uh, would you like to say I have a few words? Okay. Thank you, Ken. Okay, officers, would you all rise? Senior Vice Commanders, would you step forward and uh, present your token? Senior Vice Commanders. Commanders. and the VFW, please place your flowers.
Okay, post uh, Kaplan, uncover. chairman and he is outstanding all year long he goes through them flags checking for blending scissors broken sticks or anything and this is a job he's done and that is Hugh Jackson if anybody knows him he's in the 120th uh, engineer and they are scheduled to go to Afghanistan but anyhow I would like to Everybody know how good a job that Hugh does. Okay, old comrades, uh, if you do not have a, a military a VFW American Legion authorized cap, please uncover. We're going into the closing ceremony. And right now, present arms. that good. <laughs> Wasn't he good? When I was on Okinawa, I heard that because they buried our dead without ID in trenches, side by side. Marines, Army, Navy, whoever they was. We had a Canadian force. That was their job. They called it the Five Star. There was five of them. They spread out in that cemetery and it was the saddest thing I ever heard. But Ken done an excellent job. Don't you think so? Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, Raymond, and John. Get there. Thank each and every one of you coming out. It's getting a little bigger. Next year, let's definitely. What do you say? That's it. Tell somebody. Bring them out. Do anything. Thank you for showing your respect for the better. 